got good news to tell you, church. God bless you. I got good news to tell you. Lord, as I come before your people with this powerful word, you let little old me sit down and you take care of the situation for your people. Don't leave them to be a scrape. Leave them out of this revival tonight with more spiritual growth of you and in inside of you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. For God so loved the world, you for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So a lot of us get it twisted in the church. But Jesus sent his only son in the world not to condemn the world, but make the world a better place for his people. He was talking about eternal life. He was talking about the life when you when you meet him in heaven and greet him, you live forever and ever in a new body. I ain't talking about this old tired body, church. I'm not talking about this body when you might go blind or you might end up with cancer. I'm talking about eternal life when you live forever and forever. But let me tell you something about that, church. You got to be living by the Constitution. Now, I'm going to get too many amens out that now. you got to be living by the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. Uh -huh. Jesus left this for his people. Uh -huh. He left a road map. Uh -huh. He left instructions for his people. Uh -huh. So nobody would go astray. So we have a problem in the church, huh? We're not standing on the word of God enough. That's my subtitle. Are you standing on the word of God? Are you living by the word of God? Are you preaching on the word of God for his people? Are you living right for the word of God? In my father's house, there are many mentions. If there was not, I wouldn't have told you so. Jesus was talking about going to prepare a place uh, for us to be back with him. He wasn't talking about death. He was preparing a place for us to go back and be with him. So we could eat the milk and the glory of the, the kingdom of God. Somebody give me an amen when I get to push these things down. But the church has fallen off to the wayside, huh? The preacher don't preach the way he used to preach, huh? The people don't sing the way they used to sing, huh? They worry about what somebody going to say when they get up and say, Hallelujah, huh? Glory be to God. Huh? They worry about all these other things in the world, huh? But I'm here to tell you, Jesus left something back for us to reinsurance us like an insurance policy. That's the Constitution, huh? He didn't send his son in the world to do away with the world and to do away with his people. He sent his son in the world because whoever believed in him should not pass but have eternal life. Yes, the devil don't want you to get that understanding about eternal. That means you're going to live forever, forever, forever. Somebody give me an amen. Oh, have mercy. I was just thinking about when Jesus came in this world huh, and hung his head on that rugged cross for all his people. Huh. That was the second covenant he made for his people when he hung his head on that cross and died. And he gave up the ghost. Huh. The angels in heaven was looking around. Huh, and they was looking for somebody that could hang their head on that cross. Huh? But even none of the angels in heaven qualified the Bible declare. Huh? They was looking and going back and forth. Huh? Who could pay the price that he paid? Huh? Jesus hung his head on that cross for our sins, church. Huh? When are we going to get the church back in order? Huh? We want to have a program. Huh? We want to be like Burger King. Huh? We want to have it our way. But the Bible declares huh, when Jesus hung his head on the cross, huh, he had to give up the ghost. He had to give it up. 
We weren't strong enough to give up the ghost. We couldn't do it. He died there for all our sins. And, and we still running around like we don't know what's going on. But the church is in trouble, y'all. We don't preach no more like we used to. We don't teach no more like we used to. We want to take his word and sugarcoat his word down to nothing. You got so many people that's going to school to learn how to preach the word of God. But I'm here to tell you, if God has called you to do something, he already gave you the proof. The proof is in the pudding. You don't have to go to school if Jesus called you. All you got to do is say, Lord, give me a word for your people. Give me a solid rock to stand on. When I first started out, they was all against me. But the Bible declares, if a million people is against me, if God is for me, he's for me, they can't do no harm, baby. It's a blessing coming in. It's a blessing going out. I just want y'all to stand on the word of God. That's a solid rock. Jesus is coming back. He's looking for a church with no homeowners, no liars, no backstaggers, and no wrinkles at all. But are we going to be ready, church? Are we going to be ready, church? Are we going to be ready? But I stand on the word. He didn't let his son come down here because he could condemn the world. His only forgotten son. He was telling us, if you believe in me, then you will have everlasting life. He was talking about eternal life. Huh? That's why the devil mess with our mind. That's where the spirit lays, church, in our mind. He want to fight you on the mind. He, he want to get you off sidetrack. Huh? He don't want you to read a couple of scriptures a day. Huh? He don't want you to say, God, I love you. Huh? I'll do anything for you. Huh? In heaven as in earth. Huh? Lord, help me. Huh? Woo. We spend more time huh, running one another down huh, and not depending on the word of God. When Jesus left the road, man, when Peter was walking on the wall, huh, he thought he'd seen a ghost, huh, but it was God Almighty huh, was looking right at Peter. Huh. You better catch this, church. When Peter forgot about God huh, and stopped wondering about the wind, huh, Peter began to sink. And a lot of us wonder why we're sinking. Because we're not keeping our eye on God. Amen. Ain't nothing more important than Jesus himself. The Bible declares he's a very, very jealous God. He don't want nothing in front of him. He's first. Your marriage is not first. Your children are not first. The only thing first is Jesus the Christ. Somebody gonna be mad with me now, but I'm gonna tell you how I go. He's first. He's first. He's a very jealous God and he's a very angry God. He told me, Minister, you tell my people that they could have been gone a long time ago. But that coronavirus, I moved it out their way. Because they got a will to do for me in the kingdom. Talking about the kingdom of God. A lot of us don't want to do no will. We don't want to do no work. We don't want to do nothing. All we want to do is just sit there. And that the treasures that he invested in us die and go to a rugged grave. But the Bible declares I might die and go in that grave. But if I live right for the Lord. Oh Lord. Y'all don't hear me though. I might go in that old grave, but the body and flesh cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, come on. Somebody give me an amen. Oh, Lord. Whoa. Somebody give me an amen. The body and flesh cannot enter the kingdom. That's why we have to be buried when we die. 
But if we live right for the glory, and if we live right for the Father, and the end of the man, guess what? It's going to be eternal life for his people. If we just do right, church, he didn't send his son down here to condemn the world. He can he send his son down here to let his people know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who should believe in him should not pass but have its everlasting life. He's talking about eternal life, church. For God not sent his son into the world to forgive the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Through the world, through him might be saved. I just want to say it's a blessing to be here. And I hope I bless somebody tonight with this powerful word. And my subtitle tonight is church. Christians need to stand on the word of God. I'm, I'm closed now. I'm finished now. I'm, I'm, I'm a close. Amen. I thank you. Thank you for that word. Stand on the word of God.